all major markets are trading with a negative bias dow futures and european markets all of them are down mayur joshi what is your sense do you think best of the gains for summer of 2023 or monsoon of 2023 are behind us now afternoon nikhoj uh, i think two aspects one i think the entire downgrade uh, scenario that is getting played out in the us markets is getting played in the world markets uh, and the markets needed uh, some sign or an excuse to probably correct uh, obviously excesses had got built into the market as well uh, as we were hitting our all time highs uh, and somewhere i think with these reasons with this reasoning i think the market has uh, had its fair share of correction uh, but to a certain extent uh, a lot of sectors nikunj are still holding out uh, in terms of how we track at onil the distribution day pattern and though on the index uh, the distribution days are stacking up the broader markets and the broader indices at the sub index level uh, they are largely holding up about their key moving averages uh, to a large extent i think it is uh, profit booking which has been extensively done uh, there is one element of the market which is probably saying that china might recover but all the data points that we are probably getting in from china whatever that is uh, are still indicating that the recovery might only happen in the second half uh, so our sense is that uh, the markets might just uh, settle down after the big correction that we probably see and a typical sectoral rotation will be at play we already seen pharma starting to hold the limelight uh, so more defensive will probably come up uh, in terms of the sectoral rotation as we consolidate over the next few months uh what has changed for pharma is it just a catch up rally or the fundamentals have also changed so two aspects are nikunj one i think there has been a clear case of under ownership compared to the other sectors i think the consensus sectors uh, including the likes of infra construction defense uh, financials uh, were very very heavily owned uh, as the market is now probably getting into a more corrective phase uh, where valuations are probably getting uh, off at this juncture and where a little bit of a derating is happening in terms of forward multiples uh, i think under ownership and valuations which were reasonable for the sector as a whole are obviously aiding the second element obviously is numbers and commentaries from a lot of management uh, us market seemingly looking better pricing pressures are definitely coming off uh, the expectations in terms of new product launches with a lot of fda resolutions expected to come through and as they are coming through with a lot of eir that we are probably witnessing for the sector as a whole is probably expected to ensure that a lot of andes and niche products start coming through most of the plants which are got affected which might also propel us sales in a much healthier fashion going forward and the margin is expected to stabilize and improve with this mix going forward the bottom line growth can be far better than what we've seen in the last few years so i think those are the clear cut tailwinds that are aiding the sector as well take it across with mayuresh as well mayuresh hi um good to have you just wanted to begin by asking you about uh dixon tech that's flying away in the trading session and tell me one top bet from the pharma space So Anisha, afternoon to you as well. Uh, I think as far as Dixon is concerned, I think the news which probably came through early in the afternoon in terms of having an import ban, in terms of laptops, mobile phones, and other electronic uh, gadgets and accessories, uh, I think that is what has spurted the stock in terms of today's trade. Uh, the second element also is that it has got huge orders coming through, both in terms of laptops. Uh, they are probably the front runners in terms of Acer laptops, five uh, pack capacity or. expectations in terms of mobile phone manufacturing led tv manufacturing and therefore i think the entire ecosystem that we probably got in terms of the back end required for electronic manufacturing and with the ban that is expected to take place uh, it becomes a keen and a clear beneficiary going forward the second element obviously in terms of anisha and their business uh, outlook as well is that the odm part which is the original design manufacturing part is expected to grow up significantly both for dixon and amber that's a relatively high margin business and there i think the order wins from existing clients and prospective ones is getting up as well with operating leverage playing through even margin improvement should be obvious so i think a uh, lot of tailwinds in terms of prospective earnings for the stock itself sure. but from the pharma pick supply something that we like uh, our take is that numbers have been exceptional so far the margin guidance has been up Right. Expectations in terms of more inhalers coming. Sorry, my Urish, interjecting you there because numbers for Zomato are hitting the screen, and it's a bit of a pleasant surprise because the company has managed to report a profit on the bottom line. 
The Swede was expecting a loss to the tune of 150 crores, so a big beat coming in versus expectation. And the profitability seems to be driven by the uh, losses being narrowing in the uh, in the uh, associates of the company. Because I'm looking at the consolidated earnings of the company, the revenue is largely okay. Uh, what's really giving it a fillip <clears throat> is the fact that the loss from associates has gone down. Giving you the hint that whatever was the burnout that was expected on the likes of Blinkit, etc., that is going out, and that's the reason that stock is reacting uh, very, very positively, sharply. Uh, Mayurish, to begin with, you have a view on the matter. Yes, I think the numbers have been pleasantly surprising, uh, Anisha. I think uh, the bottom line is not something that a lot of people were expecting. I hope there are no one-offs. I'm just trying to open the press release. Uh, so I think, apart from adjustments, I think if this uh, bottom line is coming through. I think it's a clear, clear uh, uh, disclaimer from the company side that they will be also profitable before the September quarter, and they are probably doing that in the right spirit. Uh, you're absolutely right. I think in terms of the accumulated losses from Blinkit, uh, at some stage, I think the consolidation on cost efficiencies uh, that the management was carrying out was expected to play out. Uh, and a large element of the profitability has come on the balance sheet, and if this sustains, uh, you will see a re-rating even from the current levels. I know the stock has moved up significantly, but if this is to sustain and the management commentary hints towards this, you're probably looking at a re-rating candidate as far as the matter is concerned. Your take on the entire NBFC micro-lending kind of space, because that's seeing quite a bit of perk up as well, and even the specialized lenders. Now, whether it's a IRFCL in terms of railways, RECPFC in terms of power infrastructure, or the housing finance company and micro-lenders, everything is doing well. Is there a way one you one can differentiate in you know what segment is likely to do better versus the other? Uh, what would, should be the pecking order for investors? So out of the lot that you spoke about, Anisha, I think uh, MFI is, uh, clearly seems to be the space where earnings are holding up uh, pretty nicely. Even if you look at a bio bio or a quarter on quarter performance, uh, performances by OG and small finance, uh, you could probably look at Equita small finance as well, Five Star, Ubro. I think all these uh, small finance stroke microfinance banks uh, lending to the MSME sector, microfinance sector, home loan sector are doing exceptionally well. And two, three things which are driving it. One, I think on a quarter on quarter basis, you've seen collection efficiencies go up quite significantly. Asset quality pressures have come off quite significantly over the past few quarters. Uh, balance sheet strength is very, very strong, which means that the lending capacities for all these uh, smaller banks uh, are still expected to grow quite significantly. Rural economy is showing green shoots at this point of time, and hopefully if rain sustain in the second half as well, you're going to see a huge bump up in the second half as festivities return, where these bankers will probably enjoy the roost. Uh, at some stage, I think as rate cuts come through in the next financial year, uh, you're expected to see more synergies getting driven down as uh, yields and spreads uh, will stabilize and expand going forward. So I think uh, it's a very, very interesting space. Uh, earnings have held up, and largely second half should also see Everything's holding up for these small finance stroke micro finance banks. Mm, okay. Separately, what's coming under pressure, Vedanta, of course, that uh, deal uh, is having an impact. Godrej Properties, wherein the start of the year has been a bit subdued. Uh, as far as the earnings are concerned for Godrej Properties, Kansai Nerulak did not enthuse the market with its earnings at all. So that stock is down about 5%. And then Interglobe Aviation, a bit of a profit booking, a sell-on news, given the fact Q1 was bumper. But going forward, it's going to get turbulent for them. Let's see where it heads. And then Delta Corp, of course, on account of that GST being held at 28%. Is seeing a bit of a slide. Um, you know what, Mayurish? What's your view on the entire paints industry? I know it's not the most seasonally strong quarter, but historically people do use such opportunities to buy into these names as well. Whether a Kanza, whether a Asian paints, would you buy into these names? Or given the impending competition and more players coming in, it's time to maybe stay away. The competition will persist, Anisha. I think there's no two ways about it. But there is a lot of. Uh, uh, opportunities for all these players going forward. If you see the numbers, I think the volume growth has been quite reasonable enough. Uh, second half, obviously, is expected to be very, very good. Expectations, again, crude bumping up a tad bit from what we've seen in the past few quarters uh, will mean that the price cuts that we normally expected uh, might not happen quite significantly, which means that the margins might get protected. Uh, but to a large extent, I think volume stroke value growth should continue. Uh, obviously, leaders like Asian Paint uh, might continue doing well. Uh, but at Markets with India, we like uh, Indigo Paints uh, at this juncture, Anisha. Uh, both the EPSRS rating looks extremely strong. Expectations in terms of volume growth, uh, specifically in the categories that they that they cater to niche categories, uh, which includes your animal paints, wood paints, uh, ceiling paints, uh, 